Hi, this is Jack from Maths Forge, and in today's lesson, we're going to be doing the linear nth term. So let's take a look at our first example. Here we're being asked to find the 95th term of 7n minus 4. So 7n minus 4 is an nth term of a sequence. How we can find the 95th term is by taking the number 95 and replacing n with it. So our nth term can be used in this way, 7 times, instead of n, I'm going to write 95, and then we're going to subtract 4. And 7 times 95 gives us 665, and then we subtract 4 from it, which leaves us with 661. So 661 is the 95th term of this sequence. And if we check our answer, there it is. Just to mention as well, the letter n stands for the term position in the sequence. So if n is equal to 1, you are going to be finding the first term in that sequence. But in this case, we were looking for the 95th term in the sequence. And you can use the nth term to find any term in the sequence. We'll do another one star example. Here we're being asked to find the 10th term of this sequence that has the nth term here. So we're going to say n is equal to 10 since we're looking for the 10th term. And in putting this into our nth term, we're going to get minus 4 times 10 minus 6. Minus 4 times 10 is minus 40, and then we subtract 6 from it, which gives us minus 46. And this is our answer. If we check our answer, there it is. Now let's do a two-star example. Here we're being asked to find the nth term of this sequence here. So the first thing you should do is find the term-to-term -term rule. How much are you adding by or subtracting by to get to the next term? And we read it from left to right. So from 7 to 13, I know we need to add 6. And from 13 to 19, again, we add 6. So for this sequence here, the term-to-term -term rule is plus 6. We can take this term-to-term -term rule, which is also known as the common difference, and it will make up the first part of our nth term expression, which is going to be 6n. Now, to get the next part of your nth term expression, it's going to require for us to go backwards by one term. And so if we're adding 6 to get to the next term to the right, we are going to be subtracting 6 to get to the previous term. So 7 minus 6 is 1. Now, this is a positive 1, and we're going to attach it to our nth term expression here like this, plus 1. And there you have it. This is the nth term for the sequence here. Just to recap, we got this number here that was multiplied to n by identifying the common difference, and we got the second number here, plus 1, by going to the previous term of the first term. And if we check our answer, there it is. We'll do another two-star example, this time with negative numbers. I can see that to go from term to term, in this case, we're going to be adding 2. So from minus 4 to minus 2, we add 2. And this is true for the other terms as well. So our common difference is plus 2, and this is going to make up the first part of our nth term. So it's going to be 2n. And to get the next part of our nth term, we're going to go backwards by 1, so we're going to subtract 2 in this case, and minus 4 minus 2 gives us minus 6. So this minus 6 makes up the second part of our nth term. And our nth term for this sequence is 2n minus 6. And if we check our answer, there it is. Now let's do a 3-star example. Here we're being asked if minus 268 is part of this sequence here. How we can go about answering this is as follows. We first need to find the nth term. And so therefore we need to find the common difference. From minus 4 to minus 12, we are subtracting 8. And from minus 12 to minus 20, we are subtracting 8. So we can say now that the common difference is minus 8. And this makes up the first part of our nth term. Now to get the second part of our nth term, we go backwards by 1, so we're going to add 8 in this case. Minus 4 plus 8 gives us positive 4, and this makes up the second part of our nth term. Now how we can use the nth term to determine whether minus 268 is part of the sequence is by equaling the nth term to minus 268. Now we're going to solve this equation for n, and if we get a whole number, that means minus 268 is in a definitive position in this sequence. And if we don't get a whole number, if we get a decimal or a fraction, then minus 268 is not a term in this sequence. So let's see what this looks like. The first thing I'm going to do to rearrange for n is get rid of this plus 4. 
So I'm going to minus 4 to both sides of this equation. This is now going to leave us with minus 8n on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, minus 268 minus 4 gives us minus 272. Now for the next step, I'm going to get rid of this minus 8, which is attached to the n by multiplication. I'm going to divide by negative 8 on both sides of this equation. This is now going to give us n is equal to 34. So when we found the nth term of this sequence and equaled it to a number, rearranging for n gave us a position of 34. So minus 268 is definitely a term in the sequence with a position of 34. Now, if n was 34.5, then we can conclude that that number does not have a definitive position in that sequence. But for this example, minus 268 is definitely a term in this sequence. So I'm going to say yes. And if we check our answer, there it is. We'll do one more three-star example. Is 302 part of the sequence? Well, let's find out. We're going to first begin by finding the nth term. So let's find the common difference. It's going to be plus 6 for each term. And so therefore, the first part of our nth term is 6n. To find the next part, we go backwards by 1. So we're going to minus 6. 14 minus 6 is 8. So positive 8 is the next part of our nth term. Now we're going to take our nth term and equal it to the number in question, which is 302. Let's now rearrange for n. So we're going to subtract 8 from both sides. This gives us 6n and 302 minus 8 will give us 294. Now the next part is to divide by 6 on both sides to get rid of the 6 next to the n. This now leaves us with n is equal to 49. So we can conclude that 302 is definitely a term in this sequence and its position is 49. So I'm going to say yes. And if we check our answer, there it is. And that's it for the lesson on linear nth term.